So the U.S. House has passed a uh, resolution opposing the uh, boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel. Now, from what I understand, since this is a resolution, they're, they're not really passing any formal law saying that uh, folks in America uh, can't participate in a boycott against Israel. However, they're making it clear that the uh, opinion of 99% uh, of uh, the U.S. House uh, is that uh, – you're not really allowed to do that, and they're saying, well, we can't pa we can't overtly pass a bill banning people from doing this, uh, since you know we would probably be stopped by the courts uh, for violating the First Amendment. However, we very much want to, and if you do uh, participate in the BDS movement, you are a horrible, evil person who has no place in American society. They're essentially treating these folks who are not big fans of Israel uh, like they're as bad as, uh, you know, the KKK. They're saying, hey, we can't throw you in prison for being in the KKK, uh, but you're just you're 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 on the, you're you know, you're on our last nerve. Uh, that's the worst thing you can do without actually getting sent to prison. And that's called marginalization, which is interesting considering that, uh, you know, the uh, the Democrats uh, claim that they uh, stand up for marginalized communities. Of course, this isn't quite the kind of marginalization they meant. They When they say marginalization, that's code for skin color. Now, this resolution passed overwhelmingly. There were 398 people who voted in favor of it, so that's, you know— almost all of the Democrats and all the Republicans. Uh, and there were, you know, I think there were like nine people who didn't vote uh, one way or the other. And then there were 17 people who voted against it. Uh, so this was a very, uh, very overwhelming, uh, overwhelmingly uh, popular resolution in the House. Now, the interesting thing was, is that this resolution uh, did not just say that, hey, you know, we don't think you should boycott Israel. They were saying um, – they were essentially saying this resolution, voting for this resolution. You're saying that uh, it is outright wrong and you must not do it. Uh, you know, that is the boycotting of Israel. You know, there's a big difference between saying that you should not do something and saying that you must not do something. Now, the rationale in the resolution uh, behind it was essentially saying that somehow, uh, you know, the BDS movement uh, – uh, well, that's contrary to the two-state solution. Of course, our, st our stated policy in the U.S. is that we support a two-state solution, you know, like that'll ever happen. Uh, and they're saying that this, of all things, is what would prevent a two-state solution from happening. I mean, there's so many opportunities uh, for a two-state solution to have happened in the past, but there is absolutely zero opportunities moving into the future. Uh, you have way too much overlap. Uh, between you know the Israeli and Palestinian uh, you know societies now they're they're not well integrated as we would say in the United States uh, but they are certainly uh, they're certainly all mixed up in together uh, you know and that that has been uh, deliberate uh, on the part of the Israelis that was the whole idea of the settlement program is that if you get enough Israelis in the West Bank uh, well then you can't exactly give it independence because then what are you going to do with all those Israelis those Israelis aren't going to become Palestinian citizens. I mean, there's been uh, decades and decades of buildup to an eventual annexation of the West Bank, which will happen at some point. It's only a matter of time. You know, I mean, the people who are still talking about a two-state solution are living in 1949, not in 2019. And I don't say so, that as someone who's a big fan of all these Israeli settlements and this whole program. Uh, you know, I don't think they should have done it, obviously, because that inhibits their, you know, the two-state solution thing that people had you know, sought to work towards. Um, however, it is the reality now. So, you know, your your focus, you know, see, I mean, the focus now this is off topic, but the focus should be on trying to just get, you know, the Palestinian folks in the West Bank and Gaza equal rights uh, to the rest of, you know, the people in Israel so that uh, they had um, the ability to own their own house, for example, without the Israelis coming in and tearing it down and saying, oh, you don't own your house. We don't recognize your deed. You know, very basic stuff like that, you know, being <laughs> actually having private property rights and not just being wards of the state, which is what, you know, uh, the uh, the uh, Palestinians are considered uh, by the Israeli government. I don't think that there is any question uh, that in the coming decades uh, there will be, um, you know, somehow a, a lack of an Israeli presence in that area. The Israelis are going to control it. They've cemented uh, their control. So back to the resolution, the fact that it even, you know, that it somehow is using the two-state solution as its major justification for opposing the BDS movement is uh, a absolutely ridiculous and um, laughable. And I would, you know, if I were in Congress, I would oppose it on, on its face just because of that. It doesn't make any sense.
Now, of course, there's also this perspective that uh, you know the be- uh, boycotting Israel is literally genocide, uh, and that it's you know it's it's as bad as the Holocaust. And I guess the Israelis have been trying to push this a bit. Uh, you know, because they're essentially trying to say that, oh, well, if you boycott Israel, well, then that just means you hate all Jews. This is just like when Hitler told all the all the Germans, hey, you shouldn't job, shop at Jewish stores because Jews are bad, which is, of course, total nonsense. I mean, I do, I'm not someone who's involved in the BDS stuff because, frankly, I've never seen an item in, you know, in a store anywhere that said made in Israel. So it, it would never occur to me to boycott Israel. Uh, but let's say I did. Um, I would have no problem, uh, you know, shopping at Jewish-owned stores. It doesn't make any sense because Jewish people, you know, where I live, have nothing to do with Israel. So if I had some problem with the Israeli government and I wanted to boycott products, you know, that say were, uh, you know, for example, made in the West Bank in, you know, West Bank settlements, uh, that would have nothing to do with, you know, Jewish people outside of Israel. And, you know, you, you have to think that the people who are pushing this line have to be, you know, just dishonest and trying to, you know, lie to folks into getting them to think uh, that anyone who criticizes Israel is, you know, a neo-Nazi or something. But I think most of them actually believe this. And I, I say that because I'm someone who listened to a lot of talk radio growing up. And of course, you know, Israel is, you know, very important in talk radio. Israel and the Founding Fathers are like, that. those are the two most important things in the world. If you listen to, you know, American right-wing radio, you know, Israel is considered sacred, and and by more than just the evangelicals, although those are the people who have really injected this into, uh, you know, the mainstream of the American right. I don't think, you know, your average Democrat really cares much about Israel, your average Democrat voter, that is, but Republican voters in the United States, they certainly, uh, they think that, you know, people, they agree with the sentiment that anyone who is uh, at all, you know, critical of Israel is, uh, you know, is the second coming of Adolf Hitler. Now, the biggest thing that really bothers me about this whole resolution uh, is that there is implication that if you don't buy goods from a certain country, well, then obviously you're an evil racist and you hate the people who live there, uh, which is ironic considering that you know, one of the U.S. government's favorite tools to use against countries that it's upset with are sanctions, which by force of law prevent Americans uh, from buying goods from certain countries. It doesn't make sense using their own logic. You can't both, you know, use the force of law to impose sanctions uh, on a country, uh, and uh, say it is racist for uh, uh, your citizens to willingly not buy uh, goods from a certain country. Essentially, the the house is saying, hey, uh, you should only shop where we tell you to shop, and you better buy goods from whatever country we we approve of, and you be, and you better not buy goods from any countries we don't approve of. It doesn't, you know, it, they're just they're using their, you know, it's essentially a, an appeal to authority because they're saying that only Congress, for some reason, has the ability to tell you where to shop. I guess uh, I, I'm curious, you know, since the uh, the Congress now has sanctions on uh, Iran uh, and Turkey, if uh, perhaps if uh, Americans started a spontaneous movement to stop buying things from Iran and Iran was not sanctioned, uh, would the Congress go after them and say that they're you know racist and anti-Persian and that they just want to uh, they just want to commit genocide against Iranian people and that's why they're not buying their goods? I mean, I really shouldn't cover politics too much because it just the, – the lack of logic involved just infuriates me. I mean there's literally no difference between sanctioning a country and boycotting a country other than you know one of them is voluntary and the other one is is done at gunpoint. You know when sanctions uh, are put on a country, you you know the police come to your door and will uh, throw you in prison uh, for purchasing any goods from a sanctioned country. Uh, but uh, when it comes to willingly boycotting a country, then you, the individual, uh, are apparently a racist. Now, another Democrat, Elliot Engel of New York, made a very interesting point. He essentially said that uh, essentially, uh, you know, disagreeing with Israel, okay, yeah, that's protected by uh, your First Amendment. It's your right to to uh, to criticize Israel. And then he said, okay, if you as an individual decide I'm not going to buy anything from Israel, okay, that's uh, part that's covered by your First Amendment right too. You have, absolutely have a right uh, to boycott Israel on uh, as a per, as an individual person. Uh, however, what he said is not covered by uh, the First Amendment is somehow organizing with other people and agreeing that you're not going to buy things from Israel. So I guess uh, it's illegal in this guy's mind, or at least it's not protected by the First Amendment, meaning they could pass a law making this illegal, uh, to conspire to boycott Israel. 
that's hilarious to me. So then I guess he doesn't remember the part of the First Amendment that says you have, you know, the right to assemble. Now, something that caught my eye was in the article I was reading, as I said, 17 people voted against this. However, um, uh, the article in The Hill said 16 Democrats uh, voted against this bill, meaning that one of the people who voted against this bill was a Republican. And of course, the Hill article was, you know, trying to highlight the divide between, you know, the squad and Democratic leadership, uh, and say like, oh, there's a civil war going on in the Democratic Party. They didn't mention at all that there was one Republican uh, who voted against this bill. So I decided to look up who it was, and it turns out it was Thomas Massey, unsurprisingly enough. Um, and I. D couldn't find anything specific that he said about the bill, but I'd have to imagine that perhaps a lot, since Massey is a, uh, a, a free-thinking person, in my opinion, uh, perhaps he also saw the lack of logic in this resolution that I've pointed out, and he decided to say, no, this is a dumb resolution. I'm not going to vote for it. And I have a lot of respect uh, for someone, especially a Republican from rural Kentucky, uh, who was willing to vote against this bill because, you know, uh, people are going to be very upset at him at his next town hall meeting and say that he's an anti-Semite because uh, he somehow supports people's right to not buy, you know, hummus that's made in Israel or something. I mean, it doesn't make any any damn sense. So I'm glad that Massey wasn't scared into uh, voting in favor of this thing because of that. Now, Amash, however, uh, Justin Amash, who is the former Republican, I guess he's an independent now, um, who uh, left the GOP recently to much fanfare. He also has been considered, you know, one of the big libertarians in Congress, and uh, you would have thought that he would vote against this. However, I noticed that he voted present, which is interesting. Um, I think that Amash probably did that uh, because he's cons he, he's probably a little more worried than Massey about upsetting people, since of course he's in a very precarious position now uh, with his district. Uh, he. Uh, is going to have a very tough time getting reelected now that he's no longer Republican and now that he openly opposes Trump and all this stuff. Um, and also, uh, Amash is uh, – his parents, I believe, are Syrian refugees. So, of course, he has problems anyway with people – with, you know, American – evangelicals, uh, you know, in the Midwest where he lives, you know, essentially saying, hey, you know, you're an Arab, so you probably hate Jews anyway. So I'm sure Amash has to be very careful when he talks about Israel because, you know, he is the son of immigrants and it just, it, it, it would look bad for someone who looks like him uh, to criticize Israel. I mean, it looks bad for anyone in the Republican Party particularly uh, to uh, say anything other than we love Israel and they're our greatest ally, even though, you know, Israel doesn't really do much for the United States. <laughs> yeah, so that's about all you need to know about this stupid resolution. Uh, it doesn't mean much. Uh, won't change anything. Uh, it's just all posturing out for the sake of uh, the House to say how much they love Israel and so that they get, uh, you know, I guess that uh, they get some uh, donations uh, from the pro-Israel crowd next time around. But again, if everybody's pro-Israel, then nobody's pro-Israel, then everyone's just getting money from the Israeli people. And doesn't really matter. So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And if you do subscribe, please do click the bell because I do upload every day and I hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.